Okay, so here we have that g is a function that is equal to x squared times e to the k x and k is a constant. And so we want to find what value of k does g have a critical point at x equals two thirds. Okay, so the idea is to essentially find the derivative of g of x, set it equal to zero, and then solve for that zero when you plug in x equals two thirds. We set it equal to zero because we're trying to find a critical point. The critical point is where the derivative equals zero or where it's undefined. So let's go ahead, let's start finding the derivative. So to find the derivative, g prime of x, you're gonna use the product rule. Let's take the derivative of x squared first. That'll be two x times e to the kx plus x squared times the derivative of e to the kx, which will be times k e to the kx. Now, I'm, now we set the derivative equal to zero. And what we also need to do is substitute two thirds into x. So we're going to have 2 times 2 thirds e to the 2 thirds k plus 2 thirds squared k e to the 2 thirds k. Now this essentially is just like an algebra problem or maybe a pre-cal problem. You just got to solve for the solutions of this. So let's just go ahead. Let's um kind of multiply it out a little cleaner. We'll get four thirds e to two thirds k plus k let's just go this is go plus four ninths four ninths k e to the two thirds k and from here let's factor out um a four thirds, or let's factor out, we can factor out the actually e to the two thirds, e to the two thirds k, it's easier, easier. Let's factor out e to the two thirds k. And then we'll get a four thirds left there, plus a four ninths k. Now, since this equals zero, this whole expression equals zero, we know that e to the two thirds k can equal zero. So then we just set four thirds plus four ninths k equal to zero. And we solve for k. We have negative four ninths k equals four thirds. Cross multiplying, fours cancel, we get negative nine over three or negative three for K. And so our solution is A. Okay, moving on. All right, so for which of the following is the solution to the differential equation, dy dx equals two, to si two times sine, sine of x with the initial condition y of pi equals one. Okay, so this is an example where you're gonna integrate and then you're gonna solve the integral with these values for y and x. So let's set up the integral. So remember separating this, the dy on the left, so the integral of dy, multiplying both sides by dx, you get the integral of two sine of x dx. Whenever you have just dy as your integral, that just becomes y. Now two, which is a constant, the antiderivative of sine of x or the function whose derivative is sine of x is gonna be negative cosine of x. Let's not forget our constant. Now we're given the initial condition that y of pi equals one. So what that means is when x is pi, y is one. So we set one equal to negative two times the cosine of pi plus c. So now you're essentially just solving for that constant. So then we know that 
or you should know that the cosine of pi is negative one. So you have negative two times negative one plus C, and then C is gonna be negative one. And so your answer will be just this or this with the cosine or with the constant as negative one. And so then your answer will be negative two, sorry, your okay, answer will be E. All right, so 26. Okay, so here we have that that the function g has first derivative equal to the integral from zero to x at e to the negative t squared dt. So which of these must be true on the interval from zero to two? Okay, so um, this is kind of like an, an analytical one where you have to just think. Um, well, you always have to think, but um, this is, um. If you remember, this is basically an application of the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So what we can do is take the second derivative. We're gonna take the second derivative of g, and that's just taking the derivative of an integral. That, when you differentiate an, an integral, it basically undoes integration. And so all you're left with is the integrand or what's on the inside there. So e to the negative two, e to the negative t, t squared. And again, remember the t is just a dummy variable. So it's kind of just a filler. And then we just put it there because we just don't want it to be that this, this value of x is always gonna be this value of x. Just that's all it really means. Um, so then, so what we can do here is study the second derivative here. Like let's see like what the concavity is. So we can see like, you know, when is the second derivative undefined or when it's equal to zero because we want to find possible inflection points and see what's going on. Now, um, this, you know, is defined everywhere. You can take, you can raise e to any power, negative or positive. So there is not going to be a zero. So then there's no possible inflection points. So then all you have to do is just plug in a number between zero and one for x, and then you can see what the what the sign is. So let's just plug in one because that's easy. So let's find the second derivative of one. Now I'll just be e to the negative one. And again, it doesn't actually matter what e is being raised to. Any any whether it's a negative exponent or a positive, this is always going to be greater than zero. It's always going to be positive. So since the function or the second derivative is positive, that means it's concave up. And when it's concave up, that also means the first derivative is increasing because that's the second derivative describes how the first derivative changes. And so then your answer will be A. 